Let's go over to our man, Mr. Teddy Kegstad, as we do each and every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can reach Teddy every trading day, folks, at forex-trading-unlock.com. That's forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Kegstad, what's going on, brother? I'll tell you what, we got quite the dollar rally going on this morning. That's what's going on. No doubt. It's jumping back into that higher trading range, man. It just blew right through that trend line, man. It's been taking a while to get there, but it's there. Well, you're, and your your favorite market, the Japanese yen, wow. I mean, we've been saying this market's a bull for quite some time, but talk about a balloon underwater rally today, huh? Uh, there's no doubt. This uh, is pretty amazing, folks. The yen... And the yen right now is at 11093. If you've watched it, if you're watching Target TV, I mean, this is a one-way shot, man. I mean, you don't see this too often, right, Teddy? This is right, like, absolutely. Yeah. You got a, a, over a full dollar move that's happened since uh, basically like around eight o'clock last night, I think, something like that. Yeah, and now this is the kicker. And Tommy and I have been talking about it, and we had Kevin Hinks on earlier talking about it. Uh, gold won't give it up. <laughs> it's like right. you're at 1609, man. I mean, it's like everything's going up, right? Well, you know, I think it's the coronavirus, honestly. You know, it's like we're starting to see some manufacturing things come back online, but at the same token, they're also being disassociated as well in China. You yes. know, so I think it really is being. The, you know, the markets are always forward thinking, and I think right now everyone's looking at where we're going to be at in September, October already. Sure. And there's going to be shortages, man. I mean, in a huge way. Oh, sure. You know, so, yeah. and that supply yeah. line is, it's, it's, we'll see it, you know, company by company specific, but there's definitely going to be sure. shortages, no doubt about sure. it. Sure. Well, and think about this. I mean, GM announced this week that they're cutting, I, I never knew that GM made cars in New Zealand and Australia under a different name. Okay. And they, they announced this week that they're closing all their plants in both countries. So mm -hmm. that means General Motors is no longer going to make cars in two different countries completely. And you know, it, that's a big deal. That's huge. Now, is that on a temporary basis or, a, 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 you know, flat out they're just closing them? They're flat out closing them. That wow. Their plan is that within the next year, they're closing. And now think about Australia. Between the wildfires, the coronavirus, there's their shortage of, um, you know, I mean, they supply basically everything goes to China. And because yes. of the slowdown, look at how they've been impacted. The only yeah. thing that's helped the, this break, I mean, you look at the yen chart. It's, it's screaming rally today. But the Australian dollar has been trading kind of like the euro. It's just been sinking and sinking and sinking without any relief, you know. And it's like they just got compounded this week. So I think you're going to see a, a major bear there for quite some time. Yeah. yeah. This yen is so intriguing, man. I was so paranoid of this yen getting over this 110, but it's not <laughs> doing anything to the rest of, you know, the, the metals market, which is pretty wild, man. It's like, right. Yeah. And you know what's interesting about the yen is that, you know, for the past, like, six months, it's been creeping higher. It you has. know, it would get through resistance and maybe get through maybe maybe a half a dollar move at the best. But usually it was more like 20 or 30 pips at best, right. you know. And this thing today, I mean, we have over a full dollar move without any excitement in the world. I mean, I've had an upside target. We've been talking about this now, of 112 to 112 half, but it's been with more of a longer term perspective, thinking it would take months and months and months. Yeah. I mean, now we're hovering at 111. You know, I mean, it's that's a crazy move today. It is, and I guess I mean the the, the news part of it is saying that uh, they think that what things are slowing down, so that's why the yen's getting weaker. So as the, we're talking numbers, folks, as as you start talking like the 11094. Higher it gets, the weaker it gets, you know, against the U.S. dollar. So, right, that that is quite a move, man. You know, and you know what's also interesting? You know, when you you know how I, I like to use you know currencies as the major indicators against each other and stuff yes. like that, as well as the dollar index. I don't think you can use the dollar index right now as an indicator anymore because. You know, the euro is the biggest component of the dollar index yes. instead of pound. Right. If you look at a dollar index chart versus a euro dollar chart, they're basically an inverse reflection of each other. Right. You know? So it's hard to say if you're looking at most of the currencies now, where are they going, you know, on a fundamental or technical basis? I mean, your technicals are overdone in so many currencies. I mean, the Australian dollar, the euro dollar. I mean, if you're a technical indicator kind of person, you're being, you've been buried. There's no way that you can look to buy those markets right now. Right. You know? Right. Especially with the fundamentals. You know, like, 
I, I, you know how I like to incorporate both in, in, in all of my trading and stuff like that. This Corona thing, it's, it's. Uh, I've never encountered. This is not like SARS or anything else that we've, I've ever experienced in 30 years of trading, as far as a fundamental that could drive a market the way it is. You know, like the dollar being so strong. You know, I mean, we have the Swiss. That I mean, the, the U.S. dollar Swiss is is hovering. You know, they're not too far away from parity, and and the euro right now. Usually it bounces where it's at. It starts to consolidate. And right now, every day for three weeks, it's made newer move lows except for one day, and it's only had one positive day in three weeks. Yeah. I guess when you take a look at that, right, it's basically saying that things are tough around the world and we are more insulated here, right? I mean, that's, 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 that's what it seems like, you know. Yes. With, with it, the, go ahead. Sorry. Well, no, what I, I think your insulation comment is exactly it in this coronavirus you see how the world acts in a situation like this. We're lucky this is just a flu virus, you know. Right. And what's the sustainability of a country when everything starts to lock up and all of a sudden you have this lack of mobility going on? We live in a mobile world. Oh, yeah. And this is like going back to, I mean, we're in 2020. It's almost like we're going back to 1990 or something like that, literally. That's you right. Know, as far as movement. Yeah. And, you know, we, what's going to be intriguing is to see that, okay, it may, maybe, maybe, maybe the 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 aspect of uh, how we're looking at that dollar, we'll have to shift it from the European markets to the Asian markets. <laughs> right. You because know? I mean, Asia runs everything supply line, folks. I mean, that's, that's the bottom line. And, you know, the way that currencies are broken down, it's supposed to be broken down as to the, your trading partner, right? That's how we got to 60% for, sure. for the dollar, right, versus the euro, sure. right? Yeah. Well, you know, what's interesting. You made a really good point right there, too, about trading partner. Very good word, you know. As traders, we trade everything, and we, we're all about, you know, the more liquidity and the more people involved, the better. <clears throat> We've had for decades a very isolationist view of where and where goods go, come from and go to. Yes. And I think that this is shown, you know, with all this globalization. You know, the past 15 years, everyone's like, globalization, globalization, the whole world has to come together. I think the coronavirus has shown what happens when the whole world is in completely together. It doesn't work. You have to be mod. You have to be compartmentalized. You can't be just relying on uh, these countries around the world. It's just not. It's not sustainable. You know. It, it's a great ideal, and it works when everything's flowing nice. But we don't even. This is not war that's going on. This is just a disease. Yes. You know? Yeah. So. You know, it's going to be interesting. Now, here's a wild card, folks. Okay. So you got a lot of these factories that have been moving out of China for a while. It, it, let's say you get a monster factory in China. They're making smaller ones in Vietnam, Indonesia, and all these places. But there's a couple of those countries that actually have a lower pay grade than China. So it'd be interesting, like, three or four years from now, like, what ends up happening? Do you know what I mean? How much business actually came out of China into those countries? And those countries don't have a TAF coming into the U.S. yet. That's why they're doing it. So that's going to be a wild card. Not now, but two or three years from now, it's, it's going to... It's, the, it's, it's happening for it's sure. Happening. I agree with you. Yeah. I think that's good foresight yeah. into what's going to happen. Yeah. Listen, folks. Every day you can you can check you can check out uh, Teddy uh, at Forex Trading Dash Unlocked. Thank you so much. Shame <laughs> on me. This 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 yen move got me, Teddy. It sure is. It's crazy. Have a great one, man. Have a safe Thanks, one. We guys. look forward to speaking to you again. Thank Talk you. To you soon. Thanks, Stay Teddy. right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back.